Um, we're going to talk about biology, a little bit of physics, a little bit of the behavior, and definitely a lot of body language, kind of tying into um, how to interact with them safely. Um, really, when it comes down to it, so sharks are really don't want to bite. It's a last resort method, especially in clear water, but they communicate visually, not audio. So there's a lot of behavior that goes on um, as far as letting another animal know, hey, I'm getting pissed off, you know, I, 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 and he keeps going back and giving that, you know, we call it caustic behavior. But first off, I like to break it down to two different types of behavior when it comes to sharks. You have your schooling type sharks, and you have your nomadic type sharks. And uh, your uh, schooling type sharks, you know, they're very social. They like to see each other on a day-to-day like, -day basis. They hunt together, they're strength in numbers. There's a hierarchy system that's already been established with their schooling sharks. And schooling sharks would be like, uh, you know, your sandbar sharks, your Galapagos sharks, tips, your, your black tips. Um, with the nomadic type sharks, you're looking at like tiger sharks or great whites that travel huge distances. They don't like to see each other on a day-to-day -day basis. They'd rather just do their own thing. And so when they come into an area where there's other sharks, they all of a sudden have to work out a hierarchy system. And uh, that can be kind of aggressive. So uh, we like to focus on the schooling sharks when we're doing kind of immersion for people getting into, uh, introduced to sharks. And uh, with the sandbar sharks, and a lot of it's species specific when I'm going to talk about how do you tell the dominance ones from the other. With the sandbar sharks, what they do is they, uh, they tend to swim higher up in the water column, pushing the other sharks down, trying to keep them submissive below them. And these are the dominant ones that are already controlling the pack. And these are the ones that we have to deal with in essence. The submissive ones are going to be down lower and they're going to be a lot shyer and they're going to keep their distance from them. But these dominant guys are going to be the ones coming in closest to your cameras, coming in closest to you. They're going to want to check you out, see where your level of dominance is in the water. And they want to see if they can have priority of it. Now because we're air breathers, uh, we're going to be stuck at the surface and not being able to be submissive to them. And we don't use scuba because the bubbles from scuba, uh, it's just an awkward noise for them. It, it tends to freak them out. Um, so I know there's places in the world that you can use scuba with sharks and, and, and they, uh, they, they get kind of used to it. Um, out here, it's just it's not really uh, viable for us. So it's free diving kind of makes it a little bit more intimate so we can get uh, closer interactions with the animals. So again, so we're going to be stuck at the surface. They're going to eventually give us dominance. And what's going to happen is it's going to be intense in the beginning when they come and check you out. They're going to lose interest again, and then they're going to start dropping down below us and kind of being submissive to us. Sometimes we have an animal that just wants to stay dominant and stay at the surface with us. And that's when I'll be a little bit more cautious and I'll be really looking at behavior to see if that animal is getting pissed off or frustrated with the situation. And uh, we call that agnostic behavior when animals become disgruntled, basically. And uh, if enough agnostic behavior goes on, it could escalate to a bite. So we're going to talk more about that right now. How do you tell if the shark is getting uh, concerned, angry? And this is good information for you guys to have in case you know you're out on your own, you're not in a guided environment, and you see sharks and you want to go get some GoPro or you want to get closer interactions and, and get some good footage. Um, so, looking at behavior, if you don't see uh, any of these four, we like there's a lot more than four. There's definitely there's a whole book on agnostic behavior. Uh, I wish they'd make it more public. Uh, but uh, basically, we broke it down to four. There's only three listed here. But the first one is uh, checking. And we call it the yo-yo effect. Basically, where a shark dominant one's gonna come in straight at you, lock eyes with you, like you know, 20 feet away, come in, and then the sandbars are nice because they give you a personal space bubble 90% of the time, and it's usually because you got to have that eye contact. If you don't have that eye contact, that's when they're gonna come in and start doing some bumping. Um, we'll talk more about that in the rules. But usually they're gonna turn and give you a nice space bubble, and then what happens is they're like, oh, maybe I can check him again and see if you're dominant. So they'll come in and they'll check you again. You didn't move, you didn't flinch, you know, okay, and then they'll, then they'll back, they'll back off kind of react to that first check and then they'll come back and they'll give you another check and they'll be like okay maybe I can have dominance and even if you're really strong and you're, you're positioning sometimes they'll come back and they'll keep doing that and I've seen it about four or the fifth time kind of escalate to a bite so if I start seeing a check more than twice then I'm gonna get involved and I'm gonna try and take dominance or maybe we just even get everybody out of the water if I see more than two checks at one time but one check is fine I mean that's just what they do they're gonna come up okay you're dominant boom I'm down you know what I mean and so but if they turn and they keep turning then that's that's a sign of an aggressive uh, positioning and an agitated, frustrated shark. You don't want to be around that. Um, the others are dorsal arching, and the dorsal basically arches up the back, the depression of the pectoral fins coming up. It's like a shark making something big. He's flexing really hard. He's just like, ah, like I want this area. I'm big, you know. Like so, he's telling the other sharks, hey, I really want dominance. The others are going to be uh, gill popping, so the gills will flutter in and out. Usually, the gills just move really soft and slow, but they start slapping, ram ventilating. It's like a French, uh, you know, it's like signaling the other sharks. But what he's really doing, he's ram ventilating himself, getting oxygenated, so he's gonna strike. You know, so if we see that, definitely wanna back off a bit too. And then the gill pop, oh, excuse me, the jaw gaping. 
jaws will swing open. That's obvious. I mean, if you, it's like a lying growling in the water. You see any animal with its mouth open, that's the sign you're not giving out the box. So oftentimes when we try and generalize uh, shark behavior for people, we split sharks into two different groups. We talk about solitary type species, ones that don't generally hang out with each other, that's like great whites or makos or tiger sharks, and we talk about schooling type species. And the schooling type species, they already have a social hierarchy kind of set up. They generally know which animal is the most dominant, and within those packs you'll have dominant leaders of each, and sometimes they'll have competitive behavior. However, when you talk about the solitary type species, like great whites or like tiger sharks, when they come into an area where there might be a prey item or an area of interest for them that they want to have territory over or claim dominance over, you'll actually start to see a lot of this agnostic behavior. So things like parallel swimming, where they'll come up and they'll kind of size off. Generally, the larger shark is going to get to stay, and the less dominant smaller shark is going to leave. Sometimes that dominant shark will actually follow that shark out of the area to make sure that it actually leaves its area. Now, with predation versus territorial displays, sometimes with humans, a territorial display will happen where the shark swims straight at the person. Um, when they're swimming straight at the person, the best thing that the person could possibly do is maintain eye contact, so they're treated more like an equal predator, and possibly just slowly move back and away from the animal. Sometimes it's this invisible five-foot little line, just five feet back, and the animal's, okay, you're out of its little zone. Um, if you see things like pectoral dropping or checking, checking is where they're coming up, they're turning side, they're going back and they're continually going back and forth. Again, that's another challenge for that, that area or that territory. You'll see this among other sharks and you see this across different species, but there are species specifics. 